Hey folks, Technivorous here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the difference and the advantages and disadvantages of using a resin printer versus using a filament style printer. So stay tuned, we're going to jump right into it. Technivorous channel is brought to you by these fine Patreon supporters. Check us out on Patreon at patreon.com slash technivorous. I have here two very different machines from the same manufacturer. These are both Creality machines, and the one on the right is a Creality Ender 3 version 2, and the one on the left is a Creality LD002-R. Now, that's a resin printer. It uses UV resin and light in order to manufacture its models, and the one on the right is going to be using the standard filament process that's a little bit more popular with household 3D printers at the moment. So. As a good example of what these two printers are capable of, I decided to do some chess pieces. So here we go. You can see the ones I printed out on the right are in filament. The FDM, I used a 3D Solutech filament. And the stuff on the left is in this nice red filament that I got from Elegoo and came out really, really nice. So we're going to take a close-up look at some of these models and examine some of the advantages of each printer. But the first thing I wanted to point out was basically the cleanup and station setup basically so you're going to come to a point with the resin printer where you want to make sure that you have some sort of container or tray underneath so in case there's any damage to the fep or that film in there in the bottom of that vat that it doesn't just leak all over your surface there is also a lot more cleanup and things like that involved with resin printing However, that being said, you will get a nicer quality product. So let's take two of these models and we'll compare one of the resin prints to one of the filament prints and I'll tell you exactly why I say that. So here we are, we have a nice close up. These are the models of the Queens. And as you can see, they are very, very similar. They're from the same model. I modeled all of these in Fusion 360, but there are a few key differences that I wanted to point out with the filament version. Now, I don't know if you can see this very well on the monitor or not, but there is a little wispy hair right here from where the filament ended its run, and that is very noticeable. Also, when looking in here really, really closely, I know it's hard to see, but you can see that there are some layer lines. Now, this was done at a 0.16 millimeter layer height, and it is pretty fine down most of the model, but there are some places where there are corners or edges where you can definitely see the layer lines in there so let's see if I can get a little close-up of that see if you can see a little bit better Maybe if I take care of the light a little bit and there you go in there you can see the slight layer lines it's not too bad but it is noticeable whereas when you look at this model here um, it is pretty much completely smooth 100 percent there are no layer lines and really no issues with defects or anything like that at all. As you can see here, there was a spot that I could just barely see down in there, a little tiny gap in the filament. Um, and then there's also this, which is a major issue with printing thin spots. And I know it's really hard to see. Give me just a second. Let's see if I can get a better close up of this. There we go. That's much, much better. You can now see that little wispy hair I was talking about up there and you can see those layer lines pretty clearly. But the thing that I was talking about just a moment ago is when doing really thin and tall features like this, um, it doesn't have enough time to cool between bouncing around to the next one, and you end up, because it's a heated process, getting some melting and drooping there, which leads to a little bit of stringing. Now, the stringing can be cleared up with retraction settings and things like that, but you're not going to get as fine a finish on this guy as you are off of a resin paint print. So look at these pillars. You can see they're all pretty well flawless. There is not a thing wrong with this. This is a pretty exacting model from what I printed. And as you can see, no layer lines. The other thing to notice here when looking at this model is you can clearly see the seam. Now that would have been the back of the print. And in this case, it's easy to take that model, turn it around, and you can't really see it. But there are other models where seam placement is important. Say the king here, that is the back of the model as well and you can see the seam running up and down here. But when you look at the knight, this piece will have to be oriented properly on the FDM printer. And that's one of the things that we need to talk about as well when you're talking about the difference between filament and resin is the orientation because 
the orientation of a model for a resin printer is not going to be the exact same as the way you would orient it for your printer. Not just because the build plate's upside down, but there are several other reasons. And we'll go over those in just a minute when we look a little bit more at the red pieces. But as you can see, you don't end up with that seam on the resin printer. It is basically built layer by layer and the layers are super super tiny smaller than the FDM machine can do which gives you this super smooth surface leads to less finishing and it also allows you to accomplish finer detail such as these spirals here without any issues so um, you can see when we do the resin print that there is a nice pointy point on there when we compare it to the FDM printed point if you get in real close you can see that it's got a little bit of a wobble to it and that is that same problem we were talking about where there's too much heat on a small area that is causing it to deform a little bit. In both cases, they were able to do the tops of the castles pretty well. I mean, those features were small enough that they didn't get overheated on the filament version. This, of course, is pretty well flawless. Really, really happy with this resin set so far. Um, I think there was one more piece. Oh, yes, yes. We were looking at the bishop here. And as you can see, looking through the pipe there, that little groove, there's nothing inside it. And as you look through this one, you can see a couple little flanges of filament that are left behind. Let's see if we can get a little closer, closer look at that there. You can just barely see them in there. So this is, again, a better print. Now, when we were talking about adhesion and our different orientations, one of the things I found was putting these directly on the build plate with the resin printer gave me a pretty much perfect structure up and down the models pretty much came out flawless that way um, but having that much surface adhered to the bed did make it hard to get some of them away without chipping them away and a couple of them did break so I did have to print a couple more but in the long run when we're talking about time you gotta figure that this puts down things by the millimeter on a layer so it'll take several minutes for a single layer this at most is going to take maybe a minute or two on the bottom layer but the subsequent layers after that are each only going to take around 10 seconds give or take so it is a lot faster printing process one of the other things is with having the heat problem in small spaces like this and trying to print more than one of these at once I was having a hard time getting multiple models to print without causing fails or without causing these little leg pieces to get broken off and, and some of them were coming without and things like that. So I did have to do these on the FDM machine because it's such an intricate bottom one at a time. And they printed at about an hour a piece, which means I have about, let's see here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven hours on the FDM machine and eleven pieces on the FDM machine. On the other hand, I was able to print about six to eight of these on a build plate at a time and they took about six hours so I have probably 18 hours so three build plates invested in the resin so almost twice the time but I have twice the pieces as well and that's not counting the ones that I threw away that broke so time wise it comes out to kind of be a wash on a small model like this but as you're making something bigger you are gonna find you have a larger advantage with the resin machine as far as speed goes because every layer after those first few layers like I said goes super duper fast on the flip side of that you're not gonna have the build size in this machine that you have on the FDM machine so as you can see it is a fairly good size but what we're looking at is actually the build plate up here and ooh, I need to clean it up a little bit it's a little gooey the build plate that is the size of what you can actually print and then you're looking at from here to basically there so this is basically your build volume right here not super large when compared to the ender 3 or the ender 3 v2 over here which is going to give you quite a large build volume you're actually going to get basically this whole plate and then all the way up to like here so you could probably print almost print a lid for the ld002r on the ender 3 um, the other thing is true translucency. If you're going for something that you need truly transparent, resin is the way to go because it can be cleaned and polished to a little bit finer shine. It is possible to get translucent prints 
with an FDM printer, but you're going to need super fine layer time, super long prints, and a lot of post-processing work. So if you're doing something such as chess pieces or miniatures or something like that, I highly recommend getting a resin piece. It's, it's great for jewelry. It's great for things like that. If you're doing mass prototyping, larger objects, things of that nature, or things that aren't really, really detailed or intricate with small pieces like this, definitely go ahead with the filament. But all in all, you're going to find that they have similar capabilities with different strengths in different areas. So you should be happy with either. The bottom line is definitely check out one of these two machines because they're two of the most solid that I've seen so far. I get good results off them consistently. And Creality has a really, really big underground following as far as people that are willing to assist you if you have problems with your Ender 3 or things like that. Hey folks, Technivorous here. Today we're going to be taking a look at the difference and the advantages and disadvantages of using a resin printer versus using a filament style printer. So stay tuned. We're going to jump right into it. Well, that's it guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. If you've noticed the shirt, the merch is available. Go ahead and check out the Teespring merch link down below. It won't be available on a channel store until I reach 10,000 subscribers, and so far I am just about to hit 5,000. So uh, it'll be a little while, a couple more months before you see this on the actual channel, but they are available now. I have a couple other designs. Feel free to pop over there and check them out and know that any purchase through the Teespring site definitely helps to promote our site here and increase the channel's ability to make videos in the future. So we appreciate all your support. Don't forget to check out the Teespring link, check out our Patreon link, leave a like on this video and hit that subscribe button because we have a lot more coming at you in the coming days.